Hi everyone, I'm Ashley. I'm going to moderate the Q&A. We are here with Devin McGinn, director of Skinwalker Ranch. Devin also is the writer and he had a part in the movie as well. Um, and then we're also here with Ryan Burns. Ryan is a paranormal expert and he actually is the author of Skinwalker and Beyond, a book about his experiences with Skinwalker Ranch, his personal experiences. So they are here to answer any questions that you have about the film or the real life ranch. Um, all, of that, people, oh, all, yeah. of that, all of that was true except for that I didn't write it. But that was, oh, I, my, no, no, it's, it's fun, it's fun. I, I do it all. I mean, I like, you know, I want to take credit, but. <laughs> no, it was written by Adam Oler, who was a, was a great little scribe. Oh, uh, my apologies about that. Oh, I still um, love you. Go on. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Well, while people are putting in their um, questions, why don't we start first by, Devin, you telling us why Skinwalker Ranch? Like, why, why this was appealing to you? Um, well, you know, I've, I've been interested in the paranormal ever since I was young. Um, one of my greatest fears at a young age was um, alien abduction for no apparent reason. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, anything, you know, it's like you embrace what you fear, you're interested in what you fear. So uh, growing up, I just had a, a big interest uh, in the subject. Um, uh, I had read about Skinwalker Ranch quite some time ago, but it wasn't until uh, one of my partners on the film, Steve Berg, mentioned that he was doing some reading on the subject, and I uh, and it kind of hit me. I thought for a moment, has nobody made a film of this? You know, it's such an interesting place. Um, you know, because you've seen your movies that have you know ghosts and UFOs and and monsters, and but you know, here was a place you know, that a good number of people uh, were saying was real, and it had all of that, as crazy as it sounds. Um, so it just seemed like an opportunity to do something unusual that was actually, uh, you know, grounded in, in what a lot of people uh, believe is, is, is fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, why don't we have Ryan tell us a little bit about what some of the facts are about what people say about the ranch and have experienced there. Yeah. Um, the facts are, it, it, it's very open to perception, but what's, what's amazing about this particular area is that if you have multiple eyewitnesses, they all witness the same thing. So it's not one person just seeing something that they think is happening and everybody else is saying no, it's not. I mean, there's some actual legitimacy to pretty much every sighting that takes place. When people are seeing one thing in particular, uh, it kind of goes in cycles. So right now there's, uh, you know, for example, like there was, there was a time when the flash drones were the most common sighting. Everybody was seeing those. Uh, when the amber orbs are more sad, most common, everybody's seeing those. So, I mean, it's it's like a fishing report. I mean, it, <laughs> what is happening is happening. It's not like people are seeing random. Yeah. You know, it, it, so it's legit. And do you feel, and does it extend beyond the ranch proper? I mean, it's pretty much that whole basin, right? It is that whole basin. I'd say it's a big old, big old chunk of that basin. Yeah. And how did you get involved with this research and this connection to the ranch that you were able to? You know, um, kind of the opposite of Devin. I, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I didn't have an interest in the paranormal, but I felt like after some experiences, I felt like the paranormal had an interest in me, and I just tried to brush that off and ignore it for the longest time. But uh, I'm, I'm totally interested now, so I'm right on his. Uh, Right on his wavelength now. The the one thing that does actually scare the Dickens out of me is exactly what, what he was talking about. Just those crazy abduction stories you hear about. Wow. And do is abduction something that is part of the like what people say is happening with the ranch? I mean, I know that that was definitely implied in the movie. You know, and yes, there's. It, not, not the uh, typical abduction that you hear about on like UFO files, although those have taken place. Um, in fact, back in the 70s, Project Blue Book went door to door uh, through a lot of the basin and all the way down into Carbon and Emory County as well. 
and uh, they were very interested in the significant amount of abductions being reported. So it, the history, there's a history. Cool. So then, um, Devin, one of the questions that came through right now from one of the fans listening in was how how much truth is there to the opening part of the movie where Cody disappears? So I guess what Ryan's telling us is that there's actually quite a bit of truth to that over history. Well, I, I think, you know, as far as that specific abduction case, there's, there's not a lot of truth. Um, um, but, but what Ryan is saying is these kind of events have taken place in this area. Um, the reason we chose to do that was because, um, you know, a lot of the story that people specifically know about Skinwalker Ranch is, is very scientific and very interesting and a lot of anomalies and all this activity. But because we're making a, a narrative film, we needed something to, to kind of ground it in a little bit, uh, you know, to make it a little more human. So the idea that the rancher had lost his son uh, kind of gave that to us, you know, so we could still stay true to a lot of the things that were happening, but, but uh, there was a reason to invest yourself a little more in the story as far as a narrative piece uh, would go, you know, or a Hollywood feature, you know. Um, um, you know, so, so everything else we actually tried to stick pretty close to, to what, what's going on out there, but that was the one element for our film that, that we added to, to, again, strengthen the narrative. Okay, cool. And then um, another question that came through was about MDE. And um, can you tell us a little bit about, like, so MD, it's, does, is MDE based off of a, another organization that has been rumored to be part of the ranch, or what is, you know, their connection to the story versus real life? And sure. Well, um, you know, it's not necessarily modeled after any, uh, anything specific. Of course, uh, there's, the, there's the obvious everybody knows about um, NIDS, uh, which actually went on to Skinwalker Ranch itself. Um, um, but we weren't necessarily trying to emulate exactly what they were or had done, uh, again, just for character and narrative purposes. But um, but it, it, it was uh, you know I think I think NIDS was far less you know had less of a dark purpose than modern defense enterprises which is mm -hmm. you know the company that we uh, added to the film but uh, uh, so you know I I think conspiracy things do happen I mean if you look at Skinwalker Ranch. There's been a lot of research there, but nobody's talking about it, you know. So we, I kind of wanted to allude to that. So there was a little bit of that feeling of not just the phenomenon on the ranch or on these ranches uh, across the U.S., but, but the cover-up, you know. When you hear about any of these conspiracies, be it alien abduction or cryptozoology, you know, often part of that mythology is... Um, is the human element, which is often the cover-up of the situation, and who are those parties, and why are they doing what they're doing? Um, you know, so I wanted to to not necessarily answer those questions, but present that as part of our story. Cool. And now, Ryan, would you would you say that like cover-up in, in your experience with the ranch? Do you, is like the idea of cover up and conspiracy in some of these organizations? Is that something that you experience firsthand, or you know, what are your thoughts about that in terms of the real life ranch stuff going on? I think any time you have a situation like this where a few are controlling uh, something that many are interested in, the idea of conspiracy becomes legitimate. It doesn't mean it's necessarily happening. Mm -hmm. That I'm aware there's no proven facts about, you know, any of the actual uh, team uh, doing anything conspiracy related, but it's a very common belief, at least in this area, that, that there's a lot there isn't being told. And mm -hmm. that ranges everything from their research to their experiments to what they actually found or didn't find. Um, on the other hand, you know, I've, I've spoken with NIDS members and they, they seem very forthcoming and, and willing to share information, so it's hard to say. Yeah, so do you, um, 
do you want to share one of the stories perhaps that you share in your book or just something that you like a in terms of a paranormal moment that really kind of chilled you on your spine or like really made you before when you said that you weren't necessarily seeking you know the paranormal but the paranormal started seeking you maybe you could give a little story about yeah. what you mean um to make a long story short, I, I, I picked up a hitchhiker I legitimately thought was just an elderly individual, and it wasn't. It was, in fact, what I came to find out was termed a skinwalker. Wow. And I'd lost, you know, I lost a little bit of time there, not like any, any hardcore abduction, and I'm not sure what happened during that time, but I assume fine. Nothing, nothing really happened to me physically. So... That really kind of got my gears uh, grinding, and I had I had some trouble kind of sticking to um, you know the corporate America type mentality when I had this you know this this thing in the back of my head constantly questioning, hey, what happened? And eventually, I just couldn't take it anymore, so I just quit my job, rented my house, and moved up to the basement full time to try to like wow. figure it out. That's a crazy story. <laughs> um, Devin, have you had any experiences with the paranormal in your life, like that you know of? You know? Um, oh, go ahead. Oh no, no, go, go, go. Um, you know, um, not specifically. You know, other than my um, uh, un weird fear of uh, alien abduction, which I hope is just me watching too many movies as a kid. Um, yeah. Because the other, <laughs> the other, the other answer to that is one I'd rather not entertain. But right. um, And I don't purport to know if that's really happening or not, though I think that when you look at the number of people and, and, and how common the stories are that, that something is, is happening, uh, what that exactly is, I, I wouldn't purport to know. But... Um, you know, no. Interestingly enough, though, um, our executive producer, um, Ken Brettschneider, uh, also a producer on the film, an executive producer, I know that when he was young with his twin sister, and they both remember this vividly, had a, a pretty amazing close encounter with a, a UFO where they woke up together in the middle of the night to, to just a very heavy, uh, beaming, bright red light um, and uh, both of them looking out their window and seeing this giant craft, for lack of a better word, not far away, but we're talking right over over their house, yeah. um, you know, which I know is what, what really kind of has his interest. And I've heard them both talk about the story at the same time, and they both vividly remember the, the same thing. Um, so, you know, stuff does happen. And, you know, I mean, within the circles I know, certainly I've, I've heard stories. Wow. And so, um, actually, somebody had put a comment in here. What do you think of George Knapp's comments on the movie? I asked them to get more specific, but I haven't heard, seen the reply yet. <laughs> uh, I can answer that. I know what they're asking. Okay, I'll let, I'll let Ryan take that. I'm going to... Okay. I don't... I don't... Yeah, I'm going to be... I, uh... Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. George is a good guy. Uh... George, George is a genuinely good guy. However, I don't think he's ecstatic about the movie. And a lot of that is, is like Devin, Devin said, that uh, MDE um, was portrayed in a way that obviously is more entertaining, you know? And, and that's what you want in a movie is something entertaining. But yeah. I, I know that that, among other things, kind of... Uh, and, and I can see why. I mean, this is this is not the movie. You know, from my understanding, it's not trying to be an accurate documentary of actual events. So, mm -hmm. at least you know it's loosely based on real things that can happen, but it's not an ac accurate documentary. And so I can see how him and a lot of other people are. You know, I've spoken with multiple people. And they're like, "This is this is way off," you know. But I I really think that that's what it is. And yeah. and to if I can add to that, um, I uh, you know I, I, yeah to be really clear, this was never meant to be a documentary. And as a matter of fact, we say inspired by true events, not based on um, true events. 
And the reason is, is because, you know, when I say inspired by true events, I'm not even just referring to Skinwalker Ranch. These, this phenomenon is not limited to Skinwalker Ranch by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, uh, it's a great name and a very interesting place and certainly an inspiration, but there are other ranches and, uh, and areas that are experiencing um, similar amounts of activity um, you know, so so inspired by true events is, is meant to be in a much broader sense than talking about exactly the story of Skinwalker Ranch, and uh, you know, and I'm sure, uh, you know, I'm sure that you know those guys want probably to do their own film, so I'm sure it's a, probably a little annoying when uh, when another one comes out. But you know what? I'm sure they'll do something that is based on you know, and if it's not a documentary, then. You know, if it's if it's more exactly what happened, then um, I think those are two very different films, and I would like to think that they can both uh, both survive in the same universe. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that kind of answers. Um, one person asked if you guys had received any like threats from the Bigelow organization about this, or you well, kind of. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm sure. That, yeah. I think. I think that's even a step beyond probably that question. Meaning that yeah. you know, I don't. I, you know, and again, this wasn't a story specifically about all those. You know, it was not a story about Bigelow. It was not. You know, we don't. Not. We don't even have anything that's that kind of even mirrors that. Uh, mm -hmm. Really. You know. You know. Hit what exactly what he's doing. Not that I would know what that is. But um, no, and I would hope not, just because we haven't tried to, to, to say what's really going on. That's the whole thing. It's a Hollywood yeah. film. Um, we didn't comment about him. It's not about him. Um, you know, it's not really about anything he's doing. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really the only thing we really, really pulled from, from what people are saying facts are the, the phenomenon, you know, the, the, the black wolves, the... the the UFOs, uh, the orbs, you know, and, and these are things that, that lots of people are saying, you know, this isn't just, uh, you know, scientist or certain guy that owns the property. I mean, this is something the public, I mean, this is something they were writing about in, in the Las Vegas uh, Gazette, or I'm not sure the name of the paper, but the, the Mercury, Desert, yeah. Desert News, yeah, you know, before... You know, bef you know, before, so stuff's been going on there for a long time, and on top of that, I mean, there's reports, I mean, we can go as far back as the Buffalo Soldiers and, and see that mm -hmm. things were going on on this land, you know, the, you know, we talked to, uh, to you know, groups of Native people that, you know, to, to that their ancestors had, you know, you know used to call um, the area Skinwalker Trail, so everything happening here, you know, I, I don't think anybody can own that. Or claim to have rights to that. Uh, this is this is history, and especially since you know everybody is saying that it's fact. You know that's that's you know that's all that's public domain. That's that's a reality. This you know this isn't a story somebody's made up. Um, and I think anyone who knows about the ranch or truly is involved with it or has you know believes in what's going on there, you know, wouldn't argue that this is public domain. This is something that's happening that everybody can see. It. And I know I know Ryan has seen it. I know he's been with people who have seen it. So, you know, um, to try to say, you know, that somebody owns it somehow or something, I, I don't think is really fair. Yeah. And um, let's see here. Oh, one question. There's another question. Actually, one of them is about the wolf, which opens up um, an even bigger question is, is the wolf paranormal, extraterrestrial? Does anybody know? I know when people are talking about the ranch, it's like some people think it's like, you know, like a, a portal, you know, where other things from different, you know, I don't even know what the right term is, but it's just like things kind of appear through there, and then some people say maybe it's extraterrestrial related, some people say it's just paranormal. Like, what have, your, what have you, you know, what do you know as far as that goes, Ryan? Um, is it still up in the air? Is there any, you know, way to answer yeah. that? <laughs> I think the wolf is definitely the power animal of the, or the holy grail of the shapeshifter. That is the animal that um, entitles the user to, or the vehicle uh, would be the wolf, uh, would, that would entitle the shapeshifter to 
to be at its, its, its strongest, in my opinion. Okay. And, um, of, you know, of everything in the movie, my favorite part was definitely the portrayal of the wolf. And I think a lot of the reason for that is, you know, you see one of these things and, um, yeah, it changes you. There, you know, it's not a biologic, like a biological regular entity. Mm. So it's it's definitely the. I wouldn't say it has anything to do with the UFO aspect, other than these. There, there are reports of both occurring at the same time, but no, it's it's more along the lines of shape shifting. So that's like, can you describe that a little more? That's basically an energy, an entity that can change form, right? That and now is it necessarily evil in nature? Would you say or? Um, you know, um, what it is officially, or the way that the researchers have have termed it, is a uh, a precognitive intelligence, mm -hmm. and intention is. Is, is a big one, you know, whether it's evil or whether it's positive. And I think if it is seen as a positive, it's usually tricking you. Um, it's also known as the trickster. So, uh, for example, there are accounts of it being very docile and playful, and then at a moment's notice, you're turning into a killing machine. So, right. Yeah, definitely trickery is high on its list. Um, I don't know yeah. if that answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah. I mean, if I can chime in, you know, I um, it, it's it's interesting because I one of the things I think you know uh, we're catching or have caught a little flack for not from everybody but from certain reviewers was that we didn't answer uh, enough of the questions. But the thing is, is um, you know, I. One is there are aren't really any answers for sure, you know, and I think mm -hmm. for us to to try to specifically answer it would be doing the kind of the legend uh, a, a disjustice because mm -hmm. I think it's so beyond uh, just a simple answer, you know, and I know that's frustrating to some viewers, but I think it's important, you know. I mean, I mean, the the people that have experienced these things, you know, they don't have answers necessarily. I know there's theories, you know, and you know, we have, you know, uh, one of the characters in the film um, played by Steve uh, Berg, um, Sam, kind of the head scientist, towards mm -hmm. the end of the fil uh, film, he kind of touches on a, a little bit what Ryan's saying is, you know, he throws out the theory that maybe this thing is a, a single intelligence, that, that it's, that there's something behind all of this or or, or a lot of it that's that's the same source. I, I'll just call it source because I uh, I don't want to try to label it um, because again I don't know know the answer to that. So so you know, but I, I I can understand that being frustrating. But at the same time, I mean, I think if we had tried to answer it, it it would have been people would have been angry even because it's like how can you answer it's such an amazing crazy place like how do you answer that if you were to say oh it's this like I'm sure everyone would have been like oh really that's what it was right. you know like so it's kind of a lose-lose but at least this way I feel like we're, we're being honest to, to uh, you know to where where it really sits and that is nobody has totally definitive answers I think there's a lot of strong theories um, you know as Ryan just just uh, spoke about um, so yeah I just wanted to say that because I know I know that's been a little bit uh, you know for some people it's been frustrating but I'm sure that's how it is for anyone studying what's going on you know it's frustrating you want to know you want to know the answer you know and I mean I don't know if it's something that can ever be answered it's 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 such a such an amazing broad spectrum of of uh, activity mm, yeah very good point um, so somebody had asked, how much involvement do you believe that the Department of Defense has in investigating the ranch, if any at all? Like, are they, is it on the radar? Have you guys heard any, you know, do you know anything that's about that? That's a Ryan. That's a Ryan. Yeah, that's a Ryan. <laughs> the, you know, that, that's a, that, that question's a really good question. And, um... It, like we were talking about before, whenever whenever there's a situation like this, conspiracy 
is at the top of the list. And, and you just have to ask yourself, how much involvement does the Department of Defense or the NSA have with anything that's taking place? And, and lately, that's quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's listening to your phone calls, checking out your metadata, um, they are aware of the Skinwalker Ranch. And I'm just trying to say, I think of how to say this without getting into trouble. I've been told that there are currently, this is, this is as far as I'll go, there are currently national security defense contracts taking place in the Wynna Basin, and there will be for the next five years. So it's as far as I can go, but that much I do know. Okay. So there's, yeah, that's, I think that that's a good answer for now. It's a good uh, to be continued. We'll see what happens. Um, Devin, earlier on some of the other feeds, people had been asking a lot of questions about, like, what happened to Hoyt, who was Rebecca, who was in the Hummer. Um, I know that, you know, you probably have, a, like, a way to answer some of these questions about the characters and about how the movie plays out without, you know, answering them all the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, as far as the Hummer goes, you know, I don't... Um, that's one I don't probably want to answer, and I'm not even sure I know the answer. I have my theories. I know it's my film, but um, it's funny. It's my film, but sometimes I'll think about it, and I'll, I'll change my mind. I'll be like, maybe it would, maybe it would be this, because, because writing it, I'm not sure that we sat down and ever specifically said it's this. We just knew that we wanted them to be being monitored, that there was a presence, but you know, we never even, we never really answered that question for ourselves, uh, for the purpose of, again, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I think it's less interesting if it's, if it's answered specifically. Um, yeah. Rebecca was specifically meant to be um, uh, a child that lived on the property uh, during the early 70s, um, and that kind of led a little bit into the conspiracy area again, where uh, you know the team realizes that the the very people that sent them there failed to tell them that they had been there for um, some time, um, and and so probably knew more than they were saying. Um, certainly, as we see the as they're able to play the tape that they find. Uh, uh, in the shed, as they're able to play it later in the film, there's a, there's a little taste of there was actually a lot going on. Now again, that's that's this is that is that is Hollywood. That is I'm not that is not inspired by. That is not uh, you know that is simply uh, to add entertainment um, you know to making a narrative film. So again, that's that's not meant to reflect anything that's been found on any of these ranches or to comment on an organization at all. It's simply we thought it was cool. So, you know, so that's that. That's that. It's it's not meant to go farther than that. But she was meant to be a, a, a child that had lived on the, uh, the ranch previously. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. And then uh, what happens to Hoyt after he disappears there? Yeah, again, I, I don't I don't totally have the answer to that. Um, I can tell you what I will say is that at the end of at the end of the movie, you see Hoyt standing uh, as the time lapse is going by and the sun is setting, and this huge um, this huge craft kind of settles over him and turns a light on him. And I I don't know that I know the answer, but I will say that when I think about it, I'm not convinced at all that what you're it that what you're seeing is actually still Hoyt, um, at oh, least yeah. the at least the man that lived on the property looking for his son. I'm not sure mm -hmm. that I'm not sure that 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 yeah that the the figure you see there is 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 the is the um, Hoyt that we know through the film at all. So I'll say that again. That's I know that's not really answering it, but mm -hmm. but that's just something I want to throw out there. You know, it's is uh, at least for me um, a change has happened. So. That's a really interesting point of view on that. Um, yeah. I'm checking to see if there's other comments really quick in these other feeds. Um, so many feeds. <laughs> I know. I want to make sure we, we get everybody who put one in that has to do with what we're talking about. Um, 
Well, while I'm checking, I guess those of you who are tuning in, if you have any other questions you want to throw out now would be the time because we're going to be kind of wrapping it up soon. So um, I guess, like, if there, maybe Ryan can tell us another story. Ryan, did you ever talk to the, the Sherman family? Like, was that before, did they, like, totally leave the premise before your time on the ranch, or did you ever talk to them in person about some of their experiences? They did leave the premises, um, and they actually relocated uh, to Idaho. And I believe, or was it, they were on the move. Let's put it that way. They wanted to get away from, uh, they, they moved a couple of times, and mm -hmm. um, they're back now. Uh, but okay. but they, they, they wanted to just kind of get away from the stigma and uh, the barrage of questions, because as you can imagine, being in this situation, that's pretty much what they ran into whenever anyone was trying to contact them about this. In addition to that, they also signed non-disclosure statements with um, the uh, NIDS team. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, legally they were also bound by that. So, so you know, they, they, they were... They were harassed more or less by not only the poltergeist activity, but you know, also also all the neighbors just thinking they were crazy. I mean, and I've ran into that myself when I, I I'll run into friends that I haven't seen for ten years, fifteen years, and they're just like, "What are you doing, man?" And it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, the only thing I can say is, "Come on up, and I'll show you." Uh, but um, yeah, I, I I mean, I've I've heard it all. Uh, other other neighboring properties have had amazing things happen recently in the past. I mean, this 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 stuff has been going on nonstop for at least as long as I've been alive, um, and you know, according to history, a lot longer than that. Yeah, and so that's actually another thing that was kind of um, the way the movie was set up, and it's interesting to hear you re to referencing it. Just that people, like, what is the response locally there? I mean, people have been hearing these stories. Um, since the 60s, so like, there's obviously a lot of people who believe it to be true, but then are there a lot of skeptics as well? No, uh, and well, there are skeptics. There are skeptics, but the one thing about the basin is pretty much everyone will agree that, and, and there, you know, there was something in the movie along those lines. Like, if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that comment a lot. I don't know who who put that in there, but mm -hmm. I like that comment a lot because. Even people who have experiences in the paranormal, they, they uh, especially locals, know there's just something a little bit different about this particular part of the world. Mm -hmm. So you can feel it. <laughs> there, there's, there is a difference. There is yeah. a, there, there's a lot of oil workers and a lot of guys I've talked to, and I mean, they've seen it all. And, and yeah, there, there, there is a... I would say, I mean, as far as from a UFO perspective, you're you're just gonna be more apt to see one. Not only is there less ambient light, so the possibilities are higher, but um, there's a history, and there seems to be a something that draws them to that area. Mm -hmm. and, actually, and by UFO, yeah. by UFO, I just mean unidentified flying object. I mean it could be military. A lot of times, people take that to mean oh, little green man and. Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. You know, there's other answers to that. Have you ever talked with um, some of the Native American tribal members that have heard the lore passed down over time, and um, you know what what that kind of means for them in terms of what they what they had been passing down since you know ancient times, basically about the path of the Skinwalker. You know, I should leave that to them because they know yeah. so much more than I do. That 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 is a, uh, you know, yeah, that 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 is, you know, at basically, kind of not my place to. Yeah. It's really not my place to talk about. Okay. Yeah, they they are very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable. Yeah, I mean, they I had seen. Um, yeah, I had seen. I think there was actually a recent interview that was up on YouTube that was kind of cool. It was an interview with um, with someone maybe I can reference to when I post this up for people who are interested, but somebody was interviewed just talking about like what had been discussed over generations and you know about the path of the skinwalker and um, you know everyone is in agreement about what 
about the phenomenon itself. Like that, everybody can say, yeah, this is happening here. It's these phenomenon. Like basically what was represented in, in the movie of the top ones. Um, I'm checking. I think we have, let me see if we have any more comments that have come through. Um, can we please stop the flood of comments? <laughs> can we just put the brakes on and reset? <laughs> Oh, actually, one of the questions was, um, when you were doing research for the movie, did you um, did you speak to anybody in the Native American population? So that was funny that I thought to bring that up before I saw that comment. So, um, was that part of your research, Devin? Um, we 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 spoke to a couple individuals. Um, uh, all all I will say about it is that it definitely. Um, they they have strong beliefs and opinions on it, and um, you know to the point where where some you know really w don't even want to to utter the word um, wow. you know which which I which which I you know I, I imagine you know I yeah so you know when when you know when they tell you that and that you know that it's a very serious thing um, you know I have nothing for but nothing but respect. Um, you know, so you know, uh, you know. Again, that's that's kind of all I, I want to say. You know, as far yeah. as that goes. But but yeah, there's there's um there's very there's when you hear them talk about it, it's 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 very powerful. Yeah. Okay. And actually, uh, somebody had asked if there was really a cave um, with drawings, or if that was if that was a, a real thing that had ha taken place, or yeah. Ryan, want Ryan, you want to take that one? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, there's there, there's actually multiple caves, both uh, you know on the path of the Skinwalker, heading you know south of there from Ure all the way heading uh, north and to the west, um, and even even in the property, the property itself has has its cave, and I, I can attest that they do exist and they are very real. Wow. Okay. Great. Well, I think that that's it for questions. And um, you know, did you guys have any final points? We covered a lot of grounds for for people who are tuning in and wanted to know more. Um, so I guess we can wrap it here. Yeah, yeah. I would say I would say uh, uh, you know, if if you like the film, you know, share, tell others to to go check it out. You know, because that just helps get the word out for sure. Um, you know, independent films never, uh, never an easy road. So you know, if you can get out to the theater, that's that's really helpful. And then I think Ryan, why don't you tell everyone the name of your book? Because I know that um, it's really, really, really fascinating, and I think they should. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a really fascinating read. I think it's worth checking out. So I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, you bet. Um, the name of the book is Skinwalker and Beyond, and it's just a. Uh, yeah, personal accounts, a contribution from a full-time researcher. You can find it on Amazon, Lulu, it's even on eBay. I'm trying to get it in Barnes and Noble, but right now you can find it mostly online. So Amazon, Lulu, it's Skinwalker and Beyond. Okay, great. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much, guys, and thank you for everyone who tuned in and asked questions. And have fun on Skinwalker Ranch if you guys are still going to be watching the movie this weekend. All right, yeah. good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, okay, Ryan. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Appreciate it. All right, bye, everybody.